What's going on guys? Life of Lee podcast episode 20 up in this bitch. I cannot believe I've made 20 of these fuckers now. Um, like originally, <coughs> I only really wanted to tell the story of my camping trip when I went down for a couple of days with some DMT and ended up slipping into an alternate reality, which is... You can say whatever the fuck you want, but that is still 100% what I believe. And if you've followed the podcast this far, you know, I feel I'm quite a, a level-headed kind of guy. I don't bullshit. I've, I've had some great experiences. I, I don't feel the need to lie about anything that I've fucking done. And if you go back and watch that um, episode going too deep with DMT, then every single word of that is is exactly how it happened, um, but yeah, so this podcast was just to tell the story of that, and I told that story, but now we're still going, we're still going strong, 20 episodes in, 21, technically, just between you and me, um, but yeah, I did have a, I had a big, um, I, not a big idea for this episode, I just wanted, this episode, episode 20, was going to be uh, a day in the life, you know, just from waking up to whatever. And today I was like, I was meant to be doing shit today. I was meant to be going to, um, into Glasgow training, meeting David McCallum, who I've not um, hung out with in fucking years. Um, and I was going to film that, you know, I had plans for the whole fucking thing. But I live in Scotland, whatever's fucking disgusting. So now episode 20 is just going to be me sitting rabbling shite again. But a little fucking added bonus. I smoked DMT, what, 20 minutes ago? <laughs> 20 fucking minutes ago. Um, sorry, 25 minutes ago. And holy shit. Holy shit. Um, yeah, I can't. It's still, um, like, this is a completely new batch, right? Like, the last stuff when I went down the woods and um, from that moment on, <coughs> my experience with DMT completely changed and instead of going up into the DMT world, I would go laterally into the other adjacent worlds and I've been through some fucking some incredible dimensions, I swear to God, and, like, it's, it's 100% true, if any fucking, um, scientist, theoretical, physic physicist, or this kind of shit, it, it's true, <laughs> it is true, this reality is a, like, this reality, like, the one, this one is just, there's so many of them, just, right next to each other, right next to each other, and there's so many where, like, literally infinite, I cannot explain to you the magnitude of reality, there's ones where everything's happening right now, but this hair, you know, is here, instead of here, and that needs to happen for every single hair in this reality, but there's also ones where, I mean, every single possibility has to play out and I've started laterally going like through like that's anyway that's what happened with the last batch of DMT like it was the same bark I feel like I'm just rambling now but um yeah so I hit it there and at the end of it there was the same kind of um like I was in a different I wasn't in my room I was in a I was in it was as if I was in my room as if everything was exactly what I wanted it to be, like I've got a cool fucking mandala on the wall, but it looks kind of, I don't know, it just looks put up there, but in this other one it looked like it had been hanging, you know, it looked like it, it, it looked like it, like I ordered that off fucking Amazon, do you know what I mean, but when I came out of it initially, it looked like my room was made of everything how it should be, you know, it looked like the mandala I had I'd got in fucking India or some shit and I, I'd had it for years and it was well travelled like the way it was hanging um, my guitar looked fucking 
different when I came out of it I swear to god my guitar was standing there begging to be played like you see the way he was standing with his neck out he was like please please come and strum me and I did and see just um, sitting watching the notes uh, sorry watching the strings as you're playing notes it's it's fascinating when you just come out of a DMT trip but also two things I need to plug my laptop in Um, it's so I've I've just like it's so weird for like I mean I put this online this can go out to fucking literally anyone in the fucking world and from you watching it like I always have to watch these back and you get this little you know hey life Lee from this fucking like stage you know this studio but for me like to see what what's around here and how messy this table is is there still some fucking oh no I cooked that DMT um yeah it's just so funny like you, you are just seeing this little like letterbox of my room but um the fuck am I doing getting distracted by shit that's what I'm doing so hit the DMT there now I know I had a doobie a second ago. I know I had a doobie. Don't play these games with me. <sighs> so, um, yeah, my DMT use after going to the woods, instead of entering the DMT realm, I would go fucking laterally and just shoot through dimensions for 20 minutes. What would happen is I'd either spend 20 minutes, like literally picture book flicking through dimensions, like eyes open and shit's just changing in front of me like fucking and there's some realities out there that are so low res like I mean I don't know if they're I don't know what quantifies each reality I don't know if it's just you know everything playing itself out or if there's set parameters, like, okay, this is going to be a reality that's based on the lowest amount of love possible. This is, like, the reality I live in, or we live in. Um, you know, this is going to be one where there is love, but you can choose to hate if you want, and that kind of shit. But there's other realities out there that are pure love, you know? And, oh, anyway, anyway, so... That was my previous experiences with the last batch of DMT, and with this batch, I have, you know, it's completely different bark from a completely different dude. So, it was it was interesting. It was going to be interesting to see if, you know, the the supply made any difference, or if it was something that was now just happening. I feel I'm not making much sense here to people, to me, to anyone. But it's cool, it's cool. We'll get there in the end, we always do. Let me spark a divvy. Like, this happened 20 minutes ago. <sighs> That's better. Um, I don't know, if, like, I've done that a couple of times on the podcast, and it's from the film The Beach. And um, when Robert Carlyle does it, it's, it's something that's always made me fucking laugh. So yeah, um, smoked DMT there, and I can't really fucking describe what the fuck happened, it wasn't, it was just like going through a kaleidoscope, and you know, I don't know if it was my life or my experiences or whatever, but, or if it was just reality, but everything was breaking on different levels of the glass as you were going through it, it was... It was dividing itself into fractions, kind of thing. And I know, like, this is um, fractals, and but it was just so, it was so miraculous. And it got to a bit where I didn't really, not that I didn't like it, but it, I felt, you know, it wasn't enjoyable. And I was like, oh my god! And I just opened my eyes, and I was like, oh, I'm still in my room. Fuck it, I'll go back in. And I just went back in, and I just like relaxed into it again. Um, but then when I came out and opened my eyes and my room was just like the best representation it could be and then it just slowly fades and everything comes back around like I've literally had 
my cats change different species in front of me, not Ragnar. This was something I realised a wee while ago, right? Now, <coughs> and it was kind of a revelation and also kind of cemented the whole thing in my mind. And I discussed this with my mate and he kind of goes like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, I've got two cats, right? Ragnar and Lagafa. Now, Ragnar is my cat. I got him. I raised him. He's mine. Lagafa is my ex's cat. She didn't give a fuck about her, which is evident. Um, so, I ended up with Lagafa, right? Now, here's where it gets weird. When I've done DMT and I've been, like, flicking through dimensions, I've literally seen fucking my cats be made out of, like, what appeared to be candy floss. Like, I've also, I spent time in a dimension where I was made out of wood. I was literally made out of wood. And again, all true. Ain't bullshit in any of this. You could say it's all in my mind and, and what have you, but from my experience, this is what I went through, right? And that's all I'm trying to say. But anytime that, because whatever happens is, or what was happening, I would either spend 20 minutes just flicking through realities, or I would spend 20 minutes in an alternate reality. And this has been proven to me a couple of times. And a few times, Lagafa has been a completely different species of cat. Completely different. She's felt different. She's had a different body shape, different head shape. I've felt this. I've felt her ears. Like, a completely different fucking cat. But Ragnar, no matter what alternate reality I've been in, has always been the same. Right? Now, to me, that signifies that Ragnar is my cat, I was always meant to have Ragnar, I've got Ragnar in all the different realities, you know, like his fucking life energy, his his, his consciousness was always meant to connect with my consciousness, because that wee guy's helped me through a lot, like Ragnar is the first pet that I've ever had, um, no, I've had pets before, like hamsters and budgies and that kind of shit, but actual companion, like fucking... You know, you wake up in the morning and he wakes up, he comes over, rubs your face and fucking that kind of shit. Do you know what I mean? And it it really does help. Like I go up to the shop, which is like five minutes walk away, and both the cats come with me. They just walk with me. It's fucking it's incredible. Like they'll go forward a little bit as if, you know, they're hunting. And then they'll wait for me to catch up and they'll be like, Are you good? And then they'll go away and like it's it's just so cool to walk up the street and have these two little fucking animals, you know, like hunters fucking god's most perfectly designed fucking hunters just walking in front of you and protecting you and shit and plus they're called Ragnar and Lagafa do you have any idea how fucking much I love walking down the street shouting like Ragnar or even just opening the door and being Ragnar Ragnar if you, if you don't know Ragnar and Lagafa are Vikings or they were Vikings sorry and like the show Vikings, it's fucking epic, go watch it. Um, like when I started watching Vikings, I'd just finished watching Sons of Anarchy and like I enjoyed, like Sons of Anarchy was, was a big show to me and then to sl slip into Vikings and it's like, okay, they don't have bikes but they've got horses, they call each other brother, main guy's blonde, he's got long hair, yeah, I can get on board with this. Um... So yeah, go watch, go watch Vikings, and yeah, so that just proves to me that, you know, in the other realities when there's been different Lagafers, that would have been because the other person that brought Lagafer into my life would have had a different, you know, might have been a different person, might have had different set of circumstances, whatever, it's, it's baffling, but to me it's um, confirmation in a way. Anyway, so, smoked DMT like 20 minutes ago. I mean, it's a Sunday afternoon. I'm, like, my mum's making dinner. It was fucking... Well, I was so much like Kevin Bridges and shit. I was having a good day. But I thought, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll have some DMT. Because it's a new batch as well. And the last batch that I had, um, I didn't want to go deep on it. Like, I'll, I smoke DMT um, in joints. Like, if you mix it, infuse it with a herb... Like, if you're just smoking the powder, you need to um, vaporise it. 
you can do it in a glass pipe you can do it in the sandwich method there's a couple of different ways best way to do it is a volcano vaporizer <coughs> but if you infuse it with a herb you can smoke it just like anything else now typically you would put it in a pipe or a bong and you take three good hits you take you hold them as long as you can and that much dmt hitting your brain at once sends you to the fucking mountain top you know what i mean but um if you put it in a joint one you put in a little bit more than you would and two it it i mean i usually do this at night um make my room as dark as possible and it gives you the most incredible open-eyed visuals like if you stare out into a dark room the darkness just manifests itself into these fucking if you've done dmt you know if you haven't done it there's no fucking point in me describing it there really isn't um but if you're if you're interested in doing DMT, then that is a really, really good precursor. Like for the experience I've had and knowing how deep it can go, being able to like smoke it and it's being able to see it, you know, but not be a part of it. That's what smoking it in the doobie gives you. Like each draw, you hold it as long as you can. And please, please remember when I'm doing this, it ain't to get lit, you know, it ain't to get fucking high. I'll, I'll smoke weed to do that, but. When I'm doing this, it's very, it's very methodical and it's more, I mean, I've been meditating since I was 11 years old, studying Buddhism, fucking Tibetan philosophies, ancient and Western, ancient and modern Eastern philosophies and culture, like, I've been into this shit for a very, very long time and weed helps me considerably with getting into the medita meditative state especially like when i'm down the woods and that kind of shit and i need to do a whole episode of meditation i really do like i've i've done it for that long but i've created my own you know style i'm not going to say fucking i've created a whole system or that kind of shit but just when you've when you've had enough information from as many different sources and you remain open to as many different sources, you don't be like, oh, well, I, I read one book and they said to do it like this, so that's how I'm going to do it for the rest of my life. I've read fucking countless books and spoke to people and different fucking um, practitioners of different styles for different things and all this kind of shit. And the most comprehensive method that I've found and it's funny because it's also the one that disconnects you the most from all the woo and all the mysticism connected with meditation and that kind of shit is the Wim Hof method. Wim Hof method, sorry. It felt like I fucked that up. Um, and if you don't know what that is, please go and research it. Go and watch just any documentary with Wim Hof himself because as much as I can tell you about his system and his method and that kind of shit, you need to just see this guy, this human being, this embodiment of the soul and see what kind of effect what he's doing has had on him. Like, this guy has broken countless records. I don't even know. Like, this guy ran up Everest, ran up Mount Everest wearing shorts. Shorts. Nothing in his feet. Shorts. You know? And he, he puts it all down to this breathing method and it's so simple, it's unreal. And it's based on the simple fact that in everyday life, our breathing is relatively shallow, you know. The oxygen in, fucking, um, what comes out? CO2? I don't know. Um, I, I, the only thing that's coming from my mind is carbohydrates, carbon dioxide. Um, but what whims, whim, what Wim Hof's method teaches you to do is just to basically take in more oxygen than you're used to. It's that fucking simple. It's and it's consciously doing it and it's using that oxygen to to empower our body. And that's what I've realized in the last week or so. Like I've known this for a very long time, but especially two days ago when I was down the woods and I smoked a DMT doobie. What I've realized is in terms of consciousness I think our breath is the most important thing. Now, you can see breath purely from a scientific point of view. You know, it's fucking, it's oxygen, it's molecules. We take it in and it fucking carries our blood or our blood carries it around and, you know, all this kind of shit. But it's also our life force, you know. There is, there's definitely a metaphysical 
spiritual, not measurable effect of breath. You know, there's it's something else. It's not just what we can see under a microscope. And what I've thought, what I've, what I realize, for me anyway, and this is how I'm going to live my life from here on, and we'll see if it makes any differences. I honestly believe that we encode our breath, right? We take the breath in and then we encode it with however we feel at that time. And then when we breathe it out, it goes out into the world and attracts in what we've just encoded to go out into there. Now this taps into a lot of things like the secret and cosmic ordering and all this kind of shit. But in that, I've never seen anything make this connection before because like with the secret it's you know the power of positive thinking and that kind of shit as if it's the thoughts that are going out but that doesn't make much sense to me because thoughts although they are electrical signals and electrical signals can travel and and that kind of shit and also thoughts of obviously i feel hold the same spiritual significance as breath or the same spiritual aspects as breath like i think we've been missing the fact or I, not we, sorry, this is just all me, but I honestly feel that if you encode your breath consciously and send it out, then it's your breath that goes out and pulls in whatever. And what I was doing, and regardless of whatever, if everything I've just said is bullshit, right, and everyone's just sitting like <laughs> encoding your breath, what the fuck's this guy on about, right? Fuck all that. The way this made me feel, right, like, was so fucking incredible. And yeah, I'd smoked DMT, but, and I, I've done this since, and it's got nothing to do with the drugs. This is a system that anyone can utilize at any time to combat depression, to combat anxiety, to just make you feel like a million fucking dollars. Just believe, right, that you are encoding your breath with your emotions okay now emotions energy in motion that's what emotions are energy motion and you're encoding your breath and then you get to send that out now i've also had this fascination with gratitude lately this has been like six seven months i've been going out walks at sunset and consciously saying out loud everything that I'm grateful for. You know, I'm grateful for my shoes, I'm grateful for my socks, I'm grateful for my fucking hair, I'm grateful for my, my beads, I'm grateful for my mic, I'm grateful for my podcast, I'm grateful for my viewers. But you also stick in little things that you don't actually have yet, but you will be grateful for. You know, I'm grateful for my Audi R8. Um, and in fact, fuck that, I'm going to use this as an opportunity right now, 23 minutes in on the 20th episode of the Life Elite podcast. I have said, right, um, when I was 15, I think it was six days before my 16th birthday, I went for a little joyride in my mum's car and I inadvertently crashed head on into a transit van. Now, it fucked me up, right? Not in a, like, a PDSD sense, but I was just like, whoa, that's the fucking destruction that you can do in a car instantly. Like, I was just da-da-da-da-da and then boom! And within a second, the fucking damage that I had done was unreal. And it all, it always gave me this fucking, just this niggling anxiety that I don't want to drive a fucking car. And I've drove a few times on roads and shit. But, you know, it's just the size of a car. Like, it's just too big for me. I, I don't have the spatial... And I know all this will come with practice, but right now I don't have the spatial awareness or the confidence to drive a fucking car. Motorbikes, on the other hand love them like all day long on a bike doesn't fucking bother me fucking filtering traffic doing crazy shit not a single touch of anxiety but you put me behind the wheel of a car and i crumble so this was when i was 16 in the uk you can legally drive from the age of 17 i am now 33 do not drive a car i said since the fucking day the first day that i saw an audi r8 that was going to be the first car that I would own, right? Now, if I was a normal kid, like most normal kids, you get 17, 18, oh, I'm going to get my fucking driving license and then you get a wee shitty one litre course or, you know, whatever, fucking blah, fucking blah. But me, I, I still, I still haven't, I still haven't had my first car 
and I'm now 33. And when I said I was going to, an Audi R8 was going to be my first car, I wasn't an actor. I had no opportunities of being an actor. I wasn't a podcaster. Not that I make any money from this whatsoever, but Rogan just made 100 mil for his podcast. So once again, Spotify, Spotify, throw me a number. Um, exclusive. I'll, I'll come to you exclusively. You know, you, it doesn't have to be that big. I was talking to fucking Gary about this on it. I'm going to email Spotify and be like, yo, yo, I've got a podcast. Why do I keep fucking literally missing letters out in the middle of what? I've got a podcast and it doesn't have that big a viewership right now, but eventually it will have, hopefully. And, you know, I'll say, like, oh, I'm a free runner, I'm an actor, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. If you just want exclusive rights, so you just buy in now, you just promote me a little bit, and then you just get, you know, you could make your own star here. Um, give me a shout. <sighs> so, yeah, that's that's all I'm going, that's the last couple of minutes, just to state, because I've told, like, my best mates no. oh, I, Lee, he's said for years, first car he's going to have is an Audi R8. And now I'm telling you motherfuckers, and now it's, you know, it's it's public record. My first car will be an Audi R8. Boom. Done. So yeah, smoked DMT like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> and I just feel, I can't describe the actual trip, I really can't, but the feeling that I've got now, the just the, the resonance that you have in your own body, and it's not like, the drugs have gone now, like your body breaks down DMT incredibly quickly, it's not a residual effect, there's no, you know, I'm not waiting on a come down, there's no crash, this isn't fucking, it literally just removes all the, like this is what I was saying with mushrooms, you know, it clears your cookies, it fucking, it defrags your entire system, and that's from any anxieties, any fucking, you know, unconfidences, any fucking, oh, I should have said that, or oh, I'm such a dick, I should I should have said this, or I can't believe I said that, and you know, see, all the little things that you torture yourself for, because you think you could have done it differently, but you actually couldn't have done it differently, because everything's playing out the exact way it's meant to play out, because if it wasn't playing out that way, it would have played out a different way, so don't feel bad about any fucking decision you make, ever, because it was exactly the decision you were meant to make. Ah, <sighs> Ragnar's just came in, and he's just, are you coming up, Rags, Rags, Ragnar, 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 come here, come here, Ragnar, ah, oh, come on, you've already been on the podcast once before, you jumped into short once. Am I going to grab him for you? Rags, come here. I think I'm going to grab him. He won't like it. He'll probably run away, but I really want him on the podcast. And we've only got two minutes left. Come here. No, no, no. Oh. It's not happening. I will get him on this podcast, though. Believe that. Um, I'll try and get Lagaf on as well. Lagaf is a lot more talkative than Ragnar. What a fucking mixed bag this podcast has been, folks. I was going to do this later, and then when I came out of the DMT, I was like, fuck it, just just hook the mic up, just hit record, let's fucking go. Um, and that's, you just need to see this, you just need to see the life of Lee. Like, sometimes I'll come on and I'll be, like, really measured, and, you know, I've got something to say, and I've, I've thought about it, and it's well thought out or whatever. And sometimes I'm just a blabbering, fucking hyperactive jumping between thoughts kind of guy and that is the life of Lee and I love it I love every fucking second of it and this is the thing ladies and gents always remember if you're new to the podcast and you don't know or if you're a long time fucking viewer whatever the fuck I tried to kill myself 10 years ago right as far as I'm concerned I should be a rotting pile of bones in the fucking ground and I should have been that way for the last 10 fucking years but see in that 10 years i've done some shit i've lived some fucking life i have had some fucking adventures and you know what ladies and gents it ain't gonna stop anytime fucking soon in fact i think it's just gonna get better if i'm being entirely honest with you and i can't fucking wait i am charged up and ready to fucking go and we'll see where it takes us like and I'm so happy I've got this podcast. Like, I used to journal a lot. But. This is just better. 
you know, just sitting shooting the shit. And um, we've just just went over the thirty minute mark. <coughs> So this is not the episode 20 that I thought it was going to be. It's far removed from it, but it's the episode 20 that it needed to be. You know what I'm saying? And I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you are good. I really do. And if you've got anything going on, you know, anything that was troubling you, any fucking... Just I hope it all pans out, and it will. Everything will get better, even if it's... Even if you have to die to do it, eventually, you know, we will all return to the source and we will all return to infinite love. So when you know that you've got that coming up, when you know that's the ultimate fucking destiny, that you being held together like this is going to be broke apart. And I'm not just talking on the, the atomic level, I'm talking on the spiritual level. Your consciousness breaks apart and it it reforms with... the re It goes back to the, the ocean of consciousness... And when that happens, you lose all sense of self, you lose all, you know, you just, you become eternal love again. So, if that's the destiny that faces us all, we don't really have anything to worry about until we get there, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, that is episode 20. Episode 21, if you want to be a dick about it and just forget that 19.5 happened, but that's up to you. Um, yeah. My brain's still a wee bit fucking jumpy around it, but it it will level out. I'm gonna go get some dinner, um, smoke a wee divvy. Gonna have a nice relaxing bath tonight as well, I think, and then prepare myself for the week ahead. I'll see you next episode. As always, thanks for stopping by. I'll catch you in the next one. Sure.